Well, it looks like we are live. Guys, I wanted to give you some real life examples of Scientology's punishment formulas. Now, Scientology, uh, in Scientology, they don't call them punishment formulas. They call them lower ethics conditions. And I got to tell you, one of the most common questions that I see asked when Scientologists, like when I'm interviewing other former Scientologists, and someone goes like, oh boy, I got in a lot of trouble for that. Uh, one of the most common questions is, what does getting, what does that mean in Scientology? Like, what does it mean to get in trouble? What does that look like? What are you subjected to? What do you have to go through? And the answer is Scientology's lower ethics conditions formulas. And so in normal language, these things are accurately called Scientology's punishment formulas. And uh, now I've mentioned on my channel that I have copies of, I mean, originals of, the electronic originals of every document I ever created during my years working in the C organization. Every report, every dispatch, every knowledge report, tech wall ethics shit, things that shouldn't be report, cramming order, uh, everything I have. Because when I joined the C org, I joined the C org with a laptop and that computer was the computer I used for my entire time in the Sea Org. And then I left the Sea Org with that same computer. And so I have everything I ever created. And I was a prolific report writer and document creator when I was in the Sea Org. And that included every time I had to do the lower ethics conditions. So I figured there'd be a really good um, glimpse into the life of a Scientologist working through the punishment formulas. And I can show you the actual thing. Oh, because these are all written. These are all written down. Even if you go do something as a part of the formula, you then come back and write down exactly what you did. And so um, Scientology's ethics formulas, these are called in Scientology the conditions of existence. And you'll hear Scientologists use this word condition a lot, improving conditions, improving conditions. And that's because of this concept that L. Ron Hubbard um, communicated in Scientology, that you, when you're existing in this world on planet Earth, in this reality or whatever, you're never having just no impact on something. You're never not in a condition. You are always in some condition, whether good or bad. And L. Ron Hubbard said, I have isolated all of the conditions and I've assigned them formulas so that the first time in the history of existence in uh, the last 60 trillion years, there's actually steps, real world, concrete steps that you can take, things that you can do to improve your condition. Now, don't think about it too deeply, guys, because cult members aren't allowed the freedom of deep thought. I don't know how a Scientologist thinks any uh, you know, person, group, company, nation, civilization ever managed to achieve high conditions, good conditions, desirable conditions without L. Ron Hubbard's insight into this matter. But I can tell you, a Scientologist would probably say, well, that was just someone uh, kind of um, unknowingly uh, going through the conditions without knowing what they were doing, but that's why it worked. People who have success apply the conditions formulas, even though they've never heard of them. And people who don't have success fail to apply the conditions formulas because, well, they've also never heard of them. Okay, so there's formulas that are considered a good and there's formulas that are considered bad. No, that's not even a good description. And bear with me, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be as fast as I can on this. I don't want this to be a long video, but I want to do it justice. Okay, because it's not true. There are the, Let's start with non-existence. L. Ron Hubbard says let's take, take base non-existence. Okay, the lower ethics conditions come into play when L. Ron Hubbard says, you have basically, you, your presence in the organization is worse. Your effect on the organization is worse than if you weren't even there at all. <laughs> than if you weren't even there at all. You're having a negative effect. You're having a, a, a detrimental, a deleterious, a deleterious might be a real word, deleterious effect on the organization. And the uh, conditions of existence, at the very bottom, it's confusion. That can be a little confusing. We're going to leave that alone. You have treason, and there's a formula for treason. And then above treason, you have enemy. There's a formula for enemy. I'm going to show you what it is. I'm going to show you how I did it. And then above that, you have doubt. And doubt means you're not even sure if you want to be in the organization, which most Scientologists should be in doubt. And then above doubt, you have liability, which is you've become a liability to the organization. And those are the conditions below non-existence. So I'm just going to show you actual examples of these formulas. I'm going to pull up ones that I did when I was in the Sea Org. 
And then I'm going to show you one that Mike Rinder did. <laughs> uh, okay, let me see. I got to figure out which one I'm going to pull up here. Give me a moment. Okay, we're going to start with the lowest one. We're going to start... Was, is enemy below treason? Hold on, I got a list of the formulas here. I forget. I always forget which one comes first, treason or enemy. Uh, yeah, treason is below enemy. I got a whole bunch of Word documents here open. It's harder for me to share Word documents than it is to share Google Chrome tabs. So uh, bear with me. Oh, I know how I'll do it. I will, uh, yeah, I'll share the whole screen. Okay, the, en the, the formula for the condition of enemy, it's very, it's very insightful, guys. The formula is find out who you really are. Yeah, just says find out who you are. So let me share this window with you. The enemy formula. Now, when I this is a particular formula that I wrote up in May 2003. My post in the Sea Org was called Technical Secretary of Asho Day. Asho Day, Asho is the organization on L. Ron Hubbard Way with the big, with the ugly lion, the ugly metal lion statue in front of it. And uh, technic in, in Scientology, secretary means the head of a division. And the technical division is the division that oversees the delivery of all the training and the auditing. And so that was my job. I was the division head. I have three department heads under me, 10, 11, yep, 10, 11, and 12, three department heads under me. It is, in, uh, in terms of sheer numbers of staff members, it is the largest division in the organization, particularly at ASHO. But that was my job. So I was assigned a condition of enemy. And it says, find out who you really are. Now this exercise, I'm going to read it to you and then we're going to we're going to talk about it a bit more. Okay. I am a member of the C organization. I'm also a staff member of Asho Day. I recognize that my responsibility is in wearing L. Ron Hubbard's hat for this post. I recognize that in doing my job, I'm doing the job that he would have done for this post. My guideline is green on white policy. Guys, all policy letters in Scientology are written on white paper with green ink. My guideline is green on white policy and the solutions to any post situation I have are resolvable by searching for, learning, and applying green on white policy. I recognize that purpose is the highest. Oh, I recognize that purpose is the highest motivation and that to command is to serve. I recognize that as the head of Division 4 of this organization, that I am fully responsible for the well-being production, morale, and statistics of every staff member under me. This means my direct juniors, their juniors, their juniors, juniors, etc. I know that I have this duty and that I am expected to perform it. Okay. An interesting little paragraph. And you might go, Jesus, sounds like you're kind of like hyping yourself up. This is the formula for this condition. Find out who you really are and you're supposed to study it you're supposed to think about it because it says find out that implies that you don't already know you're not just supposed to sit down and write down what you already think and believe you're supposed to put some thought into it you're supposed to put some effort into it you have to show the ethics officer some sort of evidence that you did something to find out you're supposed to obtain for yourself some new knowledge now most people just sit down and they just write up the damn thing and because really, you're just trying to get through the formulas. Now, I'm, I'm going to digress here for a moment because you'll notice the thumbnail of this video was like the prison. You know, there's there's um, there's other punishments in Scientology that we've heard of. They're not standard punishments. They're like unusual, extreme, crazy punishments that David Miscavige has come up with and some of which L. Ron Hubbard came up with. Things like being put in the hole, things like being sent to the RPF. Um, and yet, usually when someone in Scientology says they're in a lot of trouble, they're not talking about those things. They're talking about these lower ethics conditions. And lower ethics conditions is something every Scientologist does a lot. <laughs> this understanding the lower ethics conditions uh, will allow you, un, un, you know, seeing how this stuff works, will allow you to get a little better insight into how Scientologists quite literally self brainwash. They brainwash themselves.
And the procedure is these lower ethics conditions. So it's not the ethics officer sitting there and like telling you what you're supposed to write down on this. You're basically put into a lower ethics condition. You're assigned the condition, which means you have no privileges. Uh, you have penalties. Uh, you usually have less pay, uh, no time off. Now you might go, I thought they didn't get time off. There's always a, there's always a promise or a hope of some time off every couple of weeks. No time off. Sometimes you'll have penalties like rice and beans or extended schedule or physical labor, all this kind of stuff. So you're put in a situation where you have to get out of these conditions in order to be uh, viewed well by your group members. And then you're given these steps and you're told to do them. And this is how Scientologist staff members, Sea Org members essentially brainwash themselves. So yes, this is, uh, 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 find out who you really are. You're basically putting out there who the, the best perfect version of who you should be. Okay. All right. So that is enemy. Oh shit. That was enemy. Didn't I say treason was lower? Oh, see, I keep getting mixed up. Is enemy or treason lower? Let me pull up the formulas. I oh, got, see, I'm, I'm already screwing it up guys. Um, come on. Sorry guys, bear with me here for a sec. Treason is below enemy, except I think I just showed you guys the enemy formula. Okay. So we're going to go to the treason formula. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. The treason formula is a little less profound. Um, okay. Here's, here's, treason. No, no, again, that's, uh, we are going to share the entire screen. There we go. That makes more sense. Okay. Treason actually comes before enemy, meaning lower. It's a lower condition. So if you're doing your lower ethics conditions, you're starting at treason. Uh, you're starting at treason first. Confusion is the lowest ethics condition, but confusion is pretty stupid and it doesn't actually, it doesn't actually require you to write out uh, a formula like this. Okay. Treason. Find out that you are, as opposed to find out who you are. First, you have to find out that you are. Then you're supposed to find out who you are. The emphasis here is still on find out. Now, that refers more to the job that you're doing. Who refers more to you as a person? So find out that you are. I am the technical secretary of the American St. Hill Organization Day. I am over the tech services department, the department of training, the department of processing, I am in charge of the delivery of all training and processing services of Scientology in this org and responsible for the quantity and quality thereof. Okay. So first, you know, the idea that you have fallen into a lower ethics condition uh, does imply that you have kind of lost, lost sight of um, your job, your title, your description, who you are as a person, your allegiance to the organization. You've essentially, you're off kilter on all sorts of stuff. So it starts out with this basic, find out that you are. In other words, what is even your job title and responsibilities? And where do you even fit in? So that's the formula, find out that you are, and that's what you saw there. And then we have the enemy formula, which um, I won't read again, but I'll just um, reiterate this. That's why the find out who you are is much more involved and, um, and requires a bit of deeper introspection than the find out that you are, okay? So first it was sort of just, what's kind of my post title and a little bit more. And then it was, but who I am, who, who am I in my core, okay? And then, so you have treason, then you have enemy, then you have doubt. Ooh, this is a good one. Now doubt is, um, doubt implies that you are not quite sure whether you want to be a part of this organization. Now you might go, oh, wait, wait, if you actually want to leave. Yeah. If you say, I think I want to leave the Sea Org, they assign you a condition of doubt, but you also end up doing the condition of doubt on your way up the conditions from the lower conditions, the ones lower than doubt, like treason and enemy and confusion. By the way, no one ever gets assigned enemy. You just get assigned treason or confusion and you work your way up. Okay, so let's see what the doubt formula looks like. And keep in mind, the essence of the doubt formula is you're having to decide whether you really want to be a part of this organization. Oh, that's right. And, and the implication is your conduct shows that you're not really sure if you are a part of this organization. You need to rededicate yourself to it. All right, so let's take a look at it. 
doubt formula. And, you know, this is actually, you know, wrote all this out. And this is what CEO members do. They sit down and they write all of this out. The first step of the doubt formula is inform oneself honestly of the actual intentions and activities of that group, project, or org, brushing aside all bias and rumor. And you actually write this shit out. Uh, so, so the actual intentions and activities of that group are, and um, I listed a whole bunch of flag orders. The flag orders are basically policies that apply just to the C organization. Uh, those are the flag order numbers. Those are the title of the flag orders. And again, remember, the step is inform oneself honestly of the actual intentions and activities of that group, project, or org. So that means the group project or org that you are not sure whether you are really wanting to be a part of it. Okay. So I'm saying that the intentions and activities of that group is to apply all of these flag orders, to apply all of what one knows of Scientology basics and ethics technology to resolve non-optimum situations in one own, own life. Guys, you're going to see tons. You're going to just see packed with the Scientology lingo to continue to put right out points in one's own environment and to persist until the scene is corrected, to take responsibility for both the efforts and the counter efforts on one's dynamics and not just going the effect of the dwindling spiral to go beyond this limited view and expands one, one, uh, one's own influence outward greatly and take on more and more responsibility to continue to persist and make things go right without recognizing the right of interference of any apparent opposition. My God, it's like a literary exercise. Um, I learned very early on in my Scientology career that the ethics officers take your lower conditions much more seriously if you put a little literary flourish into them. It shows you've really put in the work and the care and the thought and, um, and most ethics officers are kind of stupid. So they look over your ethics conditions and they see um, advanced sentence structure and they are instantly impressed. Okay, so. <laughs> Step two of the doubt, of the formula of the condition of doubt. Examine the statistics of the individual group project or org. Uh, remember, it's the individual group project or org that you're basically not quite sure if you should be a part of it or not. And so this is what I wrote out. The statistics of the group as considered above are rising at quite a fast rate. That group is composed of people who are truly pushing the scene forward, making things go right, persisting, blowing away barriers and pulling it off. This includes chairman of the board, RTC, CEO, CMO, Int, ED, Int, the staff of CMO, Int, and Int Management, the RTC reps, PAC, and a number of base execs. The stats of that group are for the most part the international stats of Scientology. These are expanding by orders of magnitude. <laughs> yes, and as a SEERG member, I actually did think that um, Scientology was expanding at the orders of by orders of magnitude. Step three, decide on the basis of the greatest good for the greatest number of dynamics, whether or not the group should be attacked, harmed, or suppressed, or helped. Of course, the conclusion is obvious, you guys. It is essentially rhetorical. This group should be helped. Step four, evaluate oneself or one's own group, project, or org as to intentions and objectives. The intentions and object. Oh, and I write all this out. Here, let me get rid of the page breaks. The intentions and objectives of the group that I have been being a part of are, oh, 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 guys, guys. So step one through three, okay. So the idea is that there's two separate groups. There's the good group that you're basically sort of being ejected from temporarily. And then there's the bad group, the group that you've been through your actions and mistakes and blunders and out ethics been being a part of. Now, they're not literally two groups, but to do this exercise, you treat them like that, like there are two separate groups. There's the good group, and then there's the group I've been being a part of. And I have to decide whether I want to join the good group or still be a part of the bad group that I've been being a part of. Now, these lower ethics conditions, like you write them all up, you turn them into the ethics officer or your senior, depending, and they look them over and they go, no, and they decide whether it's good enough or not good enough. And so you basically have to keep doing this and doing this and doing this until the person who assigns you the condition is happy with your write up. Do you see how this is like an auto brainwashing situation? Okay. 
So steps one through three all applied to the good group that um, you're supposed to want to be a part of. Now, so now when it says four, evaluate one's self or one's own group, project or org, as to intentions and objectives. Now, guys, I'm being a little long-winded about this, but you might go, but wait, you're already a part of the Sea Org. So when it says your own group, I'm just, I'm just emphasizing your own group means, no, no, the bad group that you've been being a part of. Okay, so that's why you'll you'll notice the wording here. The intentions and objectives of the group that I have been being a part of are, A, to get over-involved in own personal interests to the point of it interfering with performance on post. Guys, I don't even remember why I was doing these lower conditions at the time. You do them so often, it just doesn't even matter. Uh, B, to operate on post with personal biases that color performance on post. C, to succumb to personal losses instead of continuing to persist d to swap terminals or that's a good scientology word to swap terminals or get into a games condition with opposing elements instead of staying at cause over the counter effort and continuing to handle this includes continuing to find out how to handle if one does not already know e to not handle situations to a done but to permit them to fly up to high seniors to handle f to explain away ineffectiveness by placing responsibility at another's doorstep. Now, guys, this is an exercise where you're basically sitting down and insulting yourself. You are basically sitting down and you're going to go, I'm going to write up the actual bad intentions that I've been uh, exhibiting on post and um, the actual, what does it say? Um, it says own, your own intentions and objectives. And I'm going to write down on paper basically bad object, you're going to basically claim to have been operating with bad, negative, or evil objectives. Because this is how you show that you have seen the light. You have seen the error of your ways, good sir. And you're basically just self-flagellating. I think that's the word. <laughs> and the more you insult yourself, when writing out these conditions formulas, the more likely your ethics officer or senior is to accept them, which they have to do in order for you to be allowed, you know, to get out of the lower conditions. Okay. Um, five, evaluate one's own or one's own, I'm sorry, evaluate one's own or one's group project or org statistics. <gasps> the statistics of the group above are not good. The, st the statistics include some false statistics. The statistics also include lower conditions and justice actions. Okay, same thing. Okay, well, the next step, join or remain in or befriend the one which progresses towards the greatest good for the greatest number of dynamics and announce the fact publicly to both sides. So I write out, okay, I have decided to join the group that applies all of what one knows of Scientology basics and ethics tech to resolve non-optimum situations in one's own life. Um, I've decided to join the group that continues to put right out points in one's own environment and to persist until the scene is corrected. That takes responsibility for both the efforts and the counter efforts on one's dynamics and not just going the effect of the dwindling spiral. I am deciding to join the group that goes beyond this limited view and expands one's own influence outward greatly and takes on more and more responsibility and continues to persist and make things go right without recognizing the right of interference of any apparent opposition. My goodness. So you can see how aspirational it is. So the more you insult yourself and the more you praise the rest of the group that uh, assigned you the lower condition, the better you're doing the lower condition. Okay, step seven, do everything possible to improve the actions and statistics of the person, group, project, or org one has remained in or joined. Okay, so normally when you're doing the doubt formula, you just do like a little thing for this step because the next step, liability, the next formula, the next uh, condition, liability, that's where you have to do a lot of stuff to make up the damage and make amends. So doubt, you just do a little bit which is ironic because the step says, do everything possible. Don't think about it too deeply, guys. We were in a cult. 
Okay, it says, I worked with long time, I worked with a long time IA staff member who was having trouble on post. I did a metered debug tech checklist on her. We spent about seven hours doing false data stripping and crashing MU finding and reach and withdraw. That's a lot of Scientology words right there, guys. This was continued up to the point when she was debugged on her production and winning. Funny story, this was a, sta a CIRG member who worked in the um, International Association of Scientologists office in the West US. And she was had been sending out, she'd be getting in a lot of trouble. And she sent out the annual invitations for the IAS patron ball. And she sent out the invitations with a typo. <laughs> and it's a, an expensive print job to uh, have to do. Oh, she printed up all the cards. She had them all printed up. Very expensive invitations. Many thousands and thousands of invitations go out. Had a typo. So she was in some deep shit. They made her pay for the new print job out of her own pocket, even though she was a Sea Org member and um, wouldn't have been expected to have any money. So don't think about it too deeply, guys. We were in a cult. Okay, step eight. Suffer on up through the conditions in the new group. Now, that means through the ethics conditions. Suffer on up through the conditions in the new group if one has changed sides or suffer on up through the conditions of the group one has remained in if wavering from that group has lowered one's status. Okay, that's the condition of doubt. Uh, so let me get rid of that one. Now let's look at liability. And then after I show, liability is the last one I'll show you. And then I'll show you, because I have all of Mike Rinder's leaked OSA files on my computer when I was searching for my lower conditions, his popped up as well. So I'll show you a doubt formula that he did. So you can see the similarities between how Sea Org members, different generations, different echelons, you know, different experiences, apply these conditions the exact same way. Okay, so, oh, 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 where are you going? Where are you going? Let's give me your liability formula. All right. Now, this one is where the brainwashing, the auto brainwashing, if you thought there was some auto brainwashing in the earlier ones, this is where it really comes into full effect. Okay. And guys, I don't even remember if the, I haven't been paying attention to the dates. I don't even know if this was all the same set of lower conditions or if they're different sets of lower conditions, but here we go. The first step of the formula for the condition of liability is my friends it's decide who are one's friends my friends are those sea org members who use all the tools available to address and handle any problem encountered on post whether that means using ethics tools tech tools or admin tools and who do not resort to off policy solutions unusual solutions or destructive actions which only worsen the scene not improve it this condition in relation to my having been removed from post as tech sec asha day for creating in turbulation and for some false reports that's right that's right so this was 2005 and i left the c org in like may 2006 so this was actually the set of conditions i was doing after having been removed from that post me and my captain john lundine did not get along very well. And before I went on to my next post at the advanced org of Los Angeles. Okay. So once you decide who are your friends, it says deliver an effective blow to the enemies of the group. One had been pretending to be a part of despite personal danger. Let's break down this sentence. Um, so this group in step one, those are, those are your friends. Okay. In step one, the friends that you're, when you describe your friends, that is the group that you are supposed to now say you were only pretending to be a part of that group of people, of friends. You were only pretending. So now that you've identified who your friends are, you now know who the enemies of that group is because you've defined your friends in a very specific way. Anyone who does not fall into that group of friends, anyone who opposes that group are the enemies of that group. Now you're supposed to deliver an effective blow to the enemies of the group. And the way the sentence structure is, you're supposed to deliver an effective blow despite personal danger, okay? It's not, it, the sentence, it doesn't mean that you've been pretending to be a part of a group despite personal danger. You have to deliver an effective blow 
despite personal danger to the enemies of the group that one has been pretending to be a part of. All right. So then you have to go through this mental exercise of how do you deliver an effective blow? So here's what I did and here's what I wrote up. I worked with a supervisor who was under a uh, core supervisor. I worked with a core supervisor who was under justice for not handling her area competently and on policy. We isolated specific areas where she was not applying policy and specific areas of confusion. I spent seven hours word clearing her on the policy letter, the structure of organization, what is policy, and cleared up dozens of words. That means we defined dozens of misunderstood words. She had many wins on this. I chose this policy to word clear because a common thread in her troubles was a lack of understanding as to why policy is policy and why it is the safe and correct route to take. And she had begun to simply worry about getting in trouble. I don't remember who I did this with. I also had to write up any violations of course room policy that she was aware of and hadn't reported for fear of getting in bad with others. I helped her in, I helped her get in I helped get her in for OT cramming roods. That's a big um, Scientology sentence there. I helped, um, I helped get her in for OT cram roods, which she had not had for over a year and a half. And I've been working with her doing learning drills and word clearing to get her through a retread of the study tech materials. Additionally, I found that in her COMF, there had been some hearsay that was permitted as evidence. A verbal report given from person A to person B was written up by person B. And that specific data an isolated report was used verbatim as evidence in a charge. This is off policy, good sir. I reported this up to the applicable terminals. Terminals in Scientology just means people. Three, make up the damage one has done by personal contribution far beyond the ordinary demands of a group member. Now, the silliness of doing something like this in the C organization is you are already have committed yourself to work to, for the organization for the next one billion years. You already work for the organization uh, 18 plus hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year for $50 a week. You're already doing everything you could possibly doing to help be doing to help Scientology, and yet, in order to come out of the conditions, it has to be, and I quote, far beyond the ordinary demands of a group member. All right. So if you're already not sleeping, now you're definitely not sleeping. So what I wrote was, I did an inventory of 2,800 PC folders. Those are the auditing files. In ASHO archives, where the folders had been moved, but not logged. So could not be properly located. Oopsie. This inventory fixed this. This took 35 hours. I supervised in the EPF course room for 130 hours beyond what I needed to do to satisfy the amends requirements on my COMEV findings and recommendations. This helped the ASHO Day EPFers as well as the rest of the orgs who have recruits on the EPF. I remember doing this. And I supervised the EPF course room with Tawny Martin and we had a blast. It was awesome. I spent seven hours doing a metered debug on an IAS reg to a good product. I spent six hours doing a metered debug on a senior HCL recruit to a good product. I spent seven hours word clearing a staff member who was bugged on the PTSSP course. I spent 10 hours word clearing and drilling a deputy FBO on her post materials. I spent eight and a half hours word clearing and false data stripping a CLO staff and senior HCO staff on a study order regarding senior HCOs. I spent two hours word clearing a CLO staff member to get through a cram. All told, this comes, over, this comes to just over 216 hours of supervising, word clearing, debugging, etc. Apply for re-entry to the group. You literally have to take this sheet around to at least and get it signed by at least half of the people on the entire base. No, no, not just get it signed. At least half of the group has to say, okay, good. Like you literally hand them the piece of paper. They read this whole freaking thing, right? So it's, it's like a form of humiliation. It's like a form of humiliation and then begging for acceptance. And, and you're usually passing this out to people at meal breaks because you're not allowed to interrupt people on post time. That would be destructive and a distraction to producing staff members.
So you're usually doing it at meal breaks. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and at musters, breakfast, muster. And of course, people get pissed off if you ask them to look, read these things during their meal times. And so they're in a bad mood already. So sometimes the best time is just before muster, the five or 10 minutes before lunch, muster, breakfast, muster, dinner, muster, exercise, muster sometimes. And, um, and yeah, so if you're doing this condition just in your organization, you've got to personally pass it out to everyone in your org. But if you're doing it, like I'm kind of doing it for the whole base, the ethics officer will literally count up how many CERG members are on the base and then give you a quota for how many signatures you have to get. And um, it's kind of like auto brainwashing. Now, um, let me see. Uh, let's look at a lower condition that was in the uh, OSA files that Mike Rinder took with him when he uh, escaped from the Sea Org. It's interesting to see the lower condition from someone who is at, at a high echelon. I got to say, my lower conditions were much better. Mike was pretty lazy on these. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. Um, okay, now this is a liability formula. Okay, inform oneself honestly of the actual intentions and activities of that group, project, or organization. Oh, this is a doubt. This is not, this is not liability. This is doubt. Inform oneself honestly of the actual intentions and activities of that group, project, or organization, brushing aside all bias and rumor. The intentions are to expand Scientology, to keep Scientology pure, to stamp out of existence any incorrect applications or squirreling, hashtag squirrels, squirrel squad, to make Scientology well known and well thought of, and to create the indispensability of Scientology on a planetary scale. Two, examine the statistics of the individual group, project, or organization. The statistics are expanded orgs in premises that are a credit to Scientology and present a public image of Scientology that is in keeping with the tech we have to offer. The FSO, that's flag, guys. That's flag in Clearwater, Florida. The FSO, which continues to expand and is by far the largest org in the history of Scientology by a factor of 10 or more. Oh, wait. Okay. So he's listing off. See, he's being kind of lazy about this. I'm not going to lie. Um, he's basically listing out examples of good statistics of Scientology. Okay. So he just mentions flag. He mentions tax exemption from the IRS. Uh, no litigation in the United States. Wow. I guess in April 2006, there was no active litigation against Scientology in the U.S. Uh-oh, OSA stats are down currently. Scientology known and respected around the world. <laughs> Imagine thinking that Scientology was respected around the world. Scientology known and respected around the world with the biggest movie star in history acting as a constant ambassador, disseminating Scientology broadly. Films that are high quality, Professional presentations of Dianetics and Scientology. Thank you, Mitch Brisker. Streamlined Top of the Bridge. Those are the new OT levels that David Miscavige released. Books that actually communicate the tech correctly and in an understandable fashion, not like that drivel L. Ron Hubbard put out. LRH lectures made available for the first time, again, because of that failure, L. Ron Hubbard, who failed at all this. A new e-meter that is a massive technical advance. That's hilarious because this is evidence that of this. I mean, uh, so the Mark Super 7 quantum e-meter was released in 1996. The Mark 8 Ultra e-meter was not released until 2013. And this is a lower condition that Mike Rinder is doing in 2006. This is evidence that that e-meter was completed and ready for release seven years or more before it was actually released. That's incredible. Okay. Um, an international army of volunteer ministers that are creating goodwill all over the planet. Uh, an on-source gung-ho field that is supporting international expansion, production and manufacturing facilities at Golden Era Productions that can actually get the tech out to the world economically and in high quality. Okay, next step. Decide on the basis of the greatest good for the greatest number of dynamics, whether it should be attacked, harmed, or suppressed, or helped. Oh, it should definitely be helped. It is the most important game on earth and the only activity that actually has a hope of salvaging mankind. I mean, this is how all Sea Org members and staff members uh, talk and think and, and public as well. But it's really, you know, I mean, 
it's really drilled into you. I mean, I would say staff members and CERG members do lower conditions a lot more frequently than public do. And, um, but this really is how, how everyone thinks. Evaluate oneself or one's own group project or organization as to intentions and objectives. So this is now where Mike is just going to insult himself as, as much as possible to appease David Miscavige, who really is the only person who could have assigned Mike Rinder this lower condition. And um, by the way, by the way, if you ever see video depositions of Mike Rinder or Marty Rathbun or any former Sea Org member where they're being handed papers by Scientology lawyers and saying, is this your writing? Did you write this? Can you read it out loud? And Mike Rinder sitting there reading something like, I uh, am a terrible person who constantly lies and makes problems for David Miscavige. What you are reading is something that was written as a part of one of the steps of these conditions formulas, where what you're expected to do is to insult yourself as much as possible. That is what's happening there when you see that occur. Okay. Um, so here's Mike insulting himself as much as possible in order to get out of this lower condition. My own uh, intentions and objectives are trying to be right, to do something that is right or okay so I can demonstrate to myself and others that I am not a suppressive person, and in doing so, negating David Miscavige, chairman of the board, because I don't agree with what he says about me and haven't been willing to look and confront what I was doing. So instead, negated and made less of him. Instead of myself working to rise to the level of competence required, I have gone in the other direction and made myself less. I have disagreed with assessments of myself. I have not considered I write the worst speeches in history, but I can gain no agreement with that. So I have convinced myself and now dramatized that I must be wrong in my assessment of myself. And therefore I decided that I can't write speeches as I'm unwilling to be wrong about it again. This is a surfac. That's a Scientology word that I won't bother defining. I have been playing a game of trying to avoid trouble in order to survive. And I have withdrawn from more and more things as that appeared to be surviving by not losing. And so I approach my post in my life from the perspective of not losing and thereby, and have thereby reduced myself down to being an incompetent. And I am therefore harming those who rely on me. But I have justified this by deciding that they should not rely on me. As everyone knows, I am an SP or evil or lazy or criminal. And I have decided I can't change this as a way to explain my failures. I have operated with the postulate that nothing I do will be right. And of course, that causes what I do to be wrong. I have tried to be right through this consideration. I have tried to be right through this consideration because I am constantly, oh, I have tried to be right through this consideration because I am constantly proving that is true. This is a betrayal of the group and chairman of the board. That's David Miscavige. I have vacillated constantly between I'm not that bad and I am that bad and I am an SP. And in neither case do I confront what I really am and really have done. I have so many overts and disagreements, black PR and disaffection that I have gone into a no survival zone permanently below 2.0 on the tone scale. I have operated on the basis that the only way to avoid pain is to succumb and be no threat to anyone or anything or anything or anyone. This I know is non-survival, but I do it anyway. And it hurts the group. Underneath all this, I have a purpose and intention to help others and to make Scientology do well and achieve our objectives as fast as possible by removing external blocks and barriers that seek to prevent this and creating enormous goodwill goodwill and the indispensability of Scientology. All right. Well, I know I said that on the earlier steps, it looked like Mike was being a little lazy, but this is the step that really matters. You have to insult yourself as much as possible to appease the person you need to appease to get out of the condition and be allowed to move up to the next condition. What is incredible for me as someone who was a good little Scientology staff member and CEO member is seeing the highest executives of Scientology grovel and beg just like every other Sea Org member. 
whether middle management, continental management, service org, whatever. I mean, could you imagine a C-suite executive of a publicly traded corporation just insulting themselves and groveling for acceptance just in order to be considered a normal member of the group? No, but this is how Scientology's highest, most long-tenured executives are expected to behave, just like everyone else. Okay, five, evaluate one's own or one's group project organization's statistics. They're bad, numerous non-compliances and unhandled situations, many flaps created through no or mishandlings, especially of the media. Some stats on handling attackers, Bob Minton, Stacey Brooks most recently, some stats on dealing with individuals, Tanya, I don't know, is that Tanya Castle? I don't know. Though no product on Tom DeVocht, that's TDV, Tom DeVocht, crashed conditions across my dynamics. Now, across my dynamics means in all areas of my life. First dynamically, a mess, injured body, no mess, and living in a dump, can't even organize a haircut, no 2D, 2D means family. No 2D except occasional comm cycles with Taryn. Uh, comm cycles just means conversations. And no comm with Kathy at all for six weeks. No comm with the rest of the family, like his brother. Third, dynamically, that means the group that you work for. Third, dynamically, I'm constantly pointed out as an example of what not to be. I'm supposed to be in the old Gilman house. That's OGH. That's where they send like the RPFers at the end base. I don't eat with the rest of the crew. I have no position in space in the group. I haven't been paid for four months and generally am the slime at the bottom of the barrel. Guys, this is literally what Mike Rinder had to write in order to get back into David Miscavige's good graces. He says, I am the slime at the bottom of the barrel. Okay. Fourth dynamically, which means worldwide, uh, planetary. Fourth dynamically, I'm accomplishing nothing. And I feel like I'm cutting across what could be being accomplished on the fourth dynamic by others due to my actions above. Fifth dynamically, that's like animals, pets. I pay no attention. Sixth dynamically, um, I mean, in this case, sixth dynamic means nothing really. Uh, so the seventh is a disaster and in confusion. The seventh is like you as a spirit. The eighth dynamic is beyond my comprehension. Well, the eighth dynamic in Scientology is like, they call it the infinity dynamic or the God dynamic. And um, anyway, Mike Rinder, one of the most senior executives in Scientology, is having to say that the eighth dynamic is beyond his comprehension. I've created an existence for myself where I don't want to have anything, so I have nothing left to lose. I mean, that's just honestly a really honest statement right there, probably. That's not even debasing himself. That's probably the truest sentence in all of this. I've created an existence for myself where I don't want to have anything, so I have nothing left to lose. I've denigrated down to being a non-entity with nothing as this appears to be safer for me. Wow. Okay, six, join or remain in or befriend the one which progresses toward the greatest good for the greatest number of dynamics and announce that fact publicly to, that, uh, that fact publicly to both sides. Mike says, I joined the group that is actually working to clear the planet, the group that is headed by chairman of the board, David Miscavige, the group that doesn't have explanations and justifications for how things cannot be made to go right, the group that accomplishes its objectives and overcomes barriers to achieve valuable products. I leave the group that succumbs and gives up and caves itself in as a defense mechanism. I leave the group that is unwilling to make a decision and assert a position in space. Now, guys, when it says announce the fact publicly to both sides, there's literally a notice board in every Scientology organization, a public notice board. There's also a staff notice board where people who are doing their lower conditions type like everything Mike just typed up as his announcement. He would actually print that out on an own piece of paper and post it on the notice board so that anybody and everybody who walks by can see that's how he's announcing it publicly. Like it's literal. You're literally supposed to announce it publicly. Okay. Seven, do everything possible to improve the actions and statistics of the person, group, project, or organization one has remained in or joined. Um, okay, so he's basically, basically to me, what I'm reading from this is he, he handled CNN. So this is when they took Mike out of the hole to do a whole bunch of media appearances. Guys, this is the condition formula that Mike is working on just shortly before he actually escaped from Scientology. 
Okay. Now, and if you remember shortly before he escaped, um, he was pulled out of the hole uh, to handle a bunch of media problems with Tommy Davis. So some of these problems, Mike wasn't himself handling. He was sort of accompanying Tommy to watch Tommy because Tommy had already escaped a bunch of times and they didn't want him to escape again. So Mike was watching Tommy <laughs> and, and also assisting in the handling. Okay. So they handled CNN. They handled is Norton Graham Norton. I'm not totally sure. Uh, Rolling Stone magazine, ironically blown for good Mark Hadley and they handled South Park, or at least they worked to sort of handle these things. Suffer on up through the conditions, and he doesn't, he doesn't say anything on that one. Guys, this is how Scientologists brainwash themselves. These formulas are at least one way that the cult of Scientology is a little bit different than other cults. I know that the control mechanisms are the same. I know controlling behavior, information, thought, and emotions are the same. Recruitment tactics are the same. But there are certain things about Scientology, aspects to the Scientology experience, the, the, the tools that are used to um, control and manipulate Scientologists that I think are a bit unique. Now, it's hard to make a definitive statement on that because I'm not, you know, I'm not an expert in the other cults and the other high control groups and all that kind of stuff. And I'd love to hear from, for example, no offense to the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons, but I would love to hear from former Jehovah's Witnesses or former Mormons whether there are any sort of exercises um, in those groups that are kind of similar to uh, what I've explained and what you've seen here in the, the lower ethics conditions in Scientology. Um, I know the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons get really offended when I mention them, but you have to understand in the world of former members of things. Former Mormons and former Jehovah's Witnesses seem to connect the most with the stories and experiences of former Scientologists. So uh, again, I'm not an expert in any of other you know groups, religions, organizations, cults. I can only comment on um, what I've experienced and seen and heard. Uh, okay, let's see. What else? Yeah, that's it, guys. That's Scientology's lower ethics conditions. That's what I wanted to share with you, some real life examples. Um, I've done some videos in the past and I will do more reading to you my uh, a lot of the actual reports that I wrote on other Sea Org members while I was in the Sea Org. Knowledge reports, tech qual ethics chits, things that shouldn't be reports, all, all this good stuff. Um, but I was thinking about this the other day. And I, I was thinking about this the other day and I said, oh, I've got tons of lower ethics conditions. So there you go, guys. Uh, let's see. Dave Owens says, I got notified by YouTube. Great news. That's wonderful. Always good to know when YouTube sends out some notifications. Um, Gene Fournier, welcome as a new member. Brian S., welcome as a new member. Ken's channel says, I use the doubt formula every time I drink. I doubt I'll do that again. But then the liability formula kicks in the next morning. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, St. Louis Scientology Audit. Do you think Katie Holmes will publicly speak out against Scientology and Tom Cruise once Surrey Cruise turns 18 next month? Will Tom reconnect? Thoughts? I don't think so. I don't think she needs all that smoke. Um, I don't think she wants to be known as uh, the, um, the ex-Scientologist, ex-wife of Tom Cruise. My personal opinion is she'd rather just move on with her life. Uh, and honestly, I mean, Scientology would really. I know I, said Scientology, I know I say Scientology can't get away with a whole lot of the shit they used to get away with, but I feel like if Nicole Kidman or Katie Holmes were actually publicly speaking out, uh, Scientology would figure out how to do some crazy, crazy, crazy ass shit uh, because they'll do anything to keep little little Tommy Cruise from looking bad. So I don't think I don't think Katie Holmes wants all that smoke. That's my guess. Thank you for the question, Lewis. Eat more pizza now. Gifted five. Growing up in Scientology memberships. That is very kind of you. Eat more pizza now. Thank you very very much for doing that. All right, guys, uh, this video is a hell of a lot longer than I wanted it to be, but hope it was helpful. Hope it was a little bit of fun. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Thank you, as always, to everyone who watches until the very end, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, then you could click.